Now, I found just one more reason the National Disability Insurance Scheme has blown out like you wouldn't believe. Five years ago, the Productivity Commission said, don't worry, it's going to cost about $25 billion a year to look after our disabled. It's already way over that. And there are some estimates it could explode to twice that more, much more. And it's insane. I mean, uh, who would have thought we had that many disabled people in this country? Now, why it's going that way? Well, there are many reasons. There are many theories. Last week, for instance, we learned that doctors are diagnosing children with more severe autism than they really have, simply to make sure they don't miss out on NDIS help. But here's something else I've found after a viewer alerted me. Some authorised NDIS providers are charging huge markups on disability aids that you can get for a fifth or even a tenth of the price elsewhere. It's incredible. One is Osnew Home Care Services in Sydney. Now, we ask them to explain what they're doing, and if we ever get a response, we'll bring it to you. Uh, but uh, ever since we've, respond, <laughs> we've asked them, suddenly uh, the... Uh, LinkedIn profile of the guy named as uh, the managing director has disappeared and their prices have suddenly on the website <laughs> being cut a bit. <laughs> but let me show you what I mean. On eBay, you can get a walking stick holder to clip on your wheelchair safe for just $11.59. But Osnew charges $82 and says it can take the cost out of your NDIS package to save you the, the hassle. You can find a portable half step on the internet for $38.95. Oz New is charged $203. You can find a shower chair elsewhere for $139, but Oz New charges nearly $900. You can get a toothpaste squeezer from one rehab provider for $11.95. From Oz New, it's $66. Now I've got many other examples I could have shown you. Now, Oz New. I was news, by the way, when we got those prices off on the weekend, it says, well, those were its sale prices already after a discount of up to 40%. Now, we don't know why the prices are so very, very high. We're not accusing them of necessarily artificially increasing the prices to take advantage of the NDIS. But I do know the Minister for the NDIS, Bill Shorten, is very upset and looking into it. I asked them about this kind of thing. He tells me such rip-offs, he calls them rip-offs, uh, they're far more widespread than one example, and he's going to go after them. He thinks there are a lot of people profiteering here. For a start, it's going to look into maybe, apart from going after these people and the language he used, really, um, maybe set up a government website where people can check with what the prices should be or could be, a kind of gum tree, you know. Something's got to be done because I think it's fair to say not much has been done about this over the years. Joining me as a former board member of the NDIS is Dr. Martin Laverty, who is also Chief Executive of the Australian Medical Association and of Catholic Health Australia, among so many other top positions in the medical field, is now head of the disability services company, Aruma. Uh, Dr. Laverty, thank you so much for your time. Now, is this a common problem with the NDIS, overcharging? It is, and Andrew, thank you for shining a light on it because I think you've shown you've already contributed to solving the problem in this particular instance. But what we're seeing across the country is that there are unscrupulous operators taking advantage of vulnerable people, but also taking advantage of the taxpayer. All of your viewers tonight, whether they have a disability or not, should be focused on ensuring that we're running the most cost-efficient and effective scheme. And your viewers can be confident that there are some checks and balances in place to protect the vulnerable participants of the NDIS. And for example, a person first has to have a planned budget. There has to be an assessment that they need the device in question. And then finally, there is a price guide that the provider has to bill against. But these aren't sufficient protections to ensure that there isn't price gouging and price escalation underway. There's currently a review of the NDIS. The NDIS is nearly 10 years old. And we think there's two things that that review can do straight away. The first is that if you're a registered provider, and the illustrations, Andrew, you've found are from a registered provider, at the moment there's no requirement for ethical pricing and there should be an obligation 
for anyone who is registered under the NDIS to be ethical in the way in which they promote their services. But the second and bigger reform that's necessary, from my 10 years in, involved in the scheme when I was on the board, I argued that pricing and regulation of pricing should be separate from the funding body. At the moment, the NDIA is both funder, price setter and price regulator. Ideally, you'd separate that out so that you could better scrutinise this extraordinary market that, as you've pointed out, in this year will have $27 billion flowing through it. And for every person that wants the scheme to succeed, for every person with a disability, we have to root out those who would take advantage of the vulnerable, but also take advantage of a generous taxpayer-funded scheme. See, I like, I like what Bill Shorten uh, told me is looking at some sort of website that might then have these are what you should be charged. But I have to say, I don't know that's sufficient. One is because you're looking often at very vulnerable people, say people maybe with mental health problems or, or whatever, developmentally delayed or something. Uh, a provider they would trust, uh, that was the NDIS registered, right, would say this is what it costs and I'm going to charge it to the government, don't you worry. It's not just a rip-off of taxpayers. That, that vulnerable person will say, yes, 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 but it comes out of their budget. As you put it, there's a budget. And soon, if they're paying five, six, seven times more than the thing's worth, they run out. I think it's just so disgusting. We probably need more than a website. We're going to need a lot more to chase up these people. If ever there was a government scheme that needed greater regulation to protect the beneficiaries, it's the NDIS. Uh, Minister Shorten is right. Better information and pressure on those unscrupulous providers uh, is overdue, and I'd support that as a, an immediate step that can be taken, relatively cost-effective step. But we need to go a little bit further. If you're registered to be a provider under the NDIS, if you're under that regulation, the regulation should be stronger to require a greater commitment to ethical behaviour. Price gouging and price escalation shouldn't be allowed under a taxpayer-funded scheme. But let's take that bigger step and separate out from the NDIA its role as both price setter and funder, put in place an independent pricing body to oversee these types of circumstances, but also to ensure on behalf of people with disability and the taxpayer, that we're getting the most effective scheme possible and we're managing every cent Absolutely. to the best of our ability.